Thanks so much for joining us for this uh, Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, uh, still have a high wind advisory going here in the Kobuk Valley around Ambler and uh, all the other portions of the valley for winds gusting uh, 240 or over 40 miles an hour. Uh, again, mainly higher elevations and that's due to remain out overnight tonight until 6 a.m. Tuesday morning. Otherwise, no advisories, watches, or warnings anywhere in the state right now, uh, save small craft advisories or gale warnings for the marine areas, but public, none. And for the satellite imagery, you can see the uh, front has pushed inland but uh, stalled out here and is slowly weakening in place from uh, Bering Strait, roughly. Actually, the frontal boundary is more down towards St. Lawrence Island and then down along or near the southern edge of the cloud shield here, back down across Kodiak Island. And high clouds spreading into Cook Inlet, uh, not quite reaching northern Cook Inlet uh, here at picture time at 3 this afternoon. Lots of sunshine, Kobuk Valley, I'm sorry, No Attack Valley and the Kobuk Valley, uh, right into the eastern interior, all the way into uh, Canada, also along the North Gulf Coast, on down the Panhandle. Lots of sunshine, a few more clouds over here towards Stewart and Hyder due to the uh, snow shower activity over there in Canada that's uh, all east of the border, out to the west. Uh, pretty active system out there, low pressure, western Aleutians and the front pushing eastward. Pretty good clip here, passing the uh, Adak Atka area where winds uh, gust to 50 miles an hour with rain today, uh, pushing in toward the eastern Aleutians this afternoon and up toward the Perbaloff Islands, and still quite windy here with that low center just north of the chain there, so good uh, gale force winds with that, with again gusts anywhere from 50 to 65 miles an hour out of the west, southwest, uh, break right through here across Nunavak Island, and uh, a few showers at the Perbaloffs earlier today, there's a weak trough right here, and then they ended, and your small break there, but you're seeing the clouds increase and begin to feel the winds there from the ne that next front just to your west, southwest. Uh, looks like some pretty good sunshine across the Alaska Peninsula, but again, uh, moisture streaming eastward, possibly into the Falls Pass area. And for the uh, eastern interior here, you can see the clouds, uh, or clouds virtually non-existent here over the eastern part of the state, up to the northwest, as I pointed out, until you get up there to the Brooks Range, and a little bit of cloudiness here, but really uh, carrying clear skies or maybe some haze there along much of the Arctic coast and the observations. And we, again, as I mentioned, clouds staying all to the east, except a few crossing the border there down to the south. But looks like all that snow shower activity and most of the clouds, if not all, will stay east of the border, at least through tonight. On the chart, a uh, very weak trough right through here, trying to nudge some shower activity westward across the border, but really not having much luck at all. Otherwise, again, clear skies. There's some high stuff up over the north slope, western central Arctic coast. And then this front weakening in place here, becoming more diffuse, and the precipitation starting to break up a little bit. It's not quite a continuous band of precipitation as it was earlier, and that'll continue that trend here for the next uh, day or two. And uh, will also remain nearly in place. Uh, higher pressure, some sunshine here, and then the moisture all across the Aleutians, changing to showers out west there with a little bit chillier air coming in, but still rain reported Shimia and the strongest winds out ahead of the front, gale force winds with gusts, as I mentioned, over 50 miles per hour. Uh, some snow ending St. Lawrence Island. Uh, snow also ended at Nome this afternoon. It became more intermittent. And for tonight, uh, that'll continue to weaken and really not move a whole lot. Uh, still a chance of some rain and snow or snow there for the Seward Peninsula, down across the Cusquam Valley, and uh, Cook Inlet may see rain or rain and snow mixed a little farther to the north, possibly overnight tonight. Some of that moisture tries to push northward, but it won't make it too far. Uh, should stay generally clear or variably cloudy, northern Cook Inlet. But probably will see a little bit of an increase in the cloudiness, but areas on up to the Arctic coast, no change, mostly clear, partly cloudy, and uh, very windy here for the Aleutians. West winds, again, 
uh, approaching storm force uh, in the gusts there with numerous showers along with those winds. Southeast coast, no change at all really from the weather you've had the last couple of days. And that'll continue into tomorrow as well, except for a weak trough down here to the south, bring a chance of moisture into the southern areas later on uh, in the day. But the uh, upper level trough coming down from the north with snow showers will stay again north or northeast of the area there. So maybe no more than a few clouds. Another sunny day coming up for just about all of the interior here, except you get into the clouds, again, that uh, leftover area moisture continuing to dissipate and become less significant throughout the day on Tuesday. They're just scattered rain and snow showers now with a little bit better uh, chance of light rain down across uh, Cook Inlet from Kachemak Bay across the southern Kenai Peninsula area, drying out for Kodiak in between systems. Next one right on its heels though, pushing rain and wind into uh, Bristol Bay there with, uh, we'll see on Wednesday, that lifts northward a little bit, uh, low center tracks eastward, really not moving too fast. Uh, main push off to the east here drives the front into the southern Gulf of Alaska, uh, rotating northward a tad there. So areas of rain or rain and snow mixed uh, really from the Alaska range on out to the west. Half the Yukon Delta affected the northern half will stay dry with lots of sunshine, but a tighter gradient means windier conditions. So if uh, Wind advisory ended for Kobuk Valley. It may kick in again, uh, not only for the Kobuk Valley, possibly all the way out to the western Arctic coast as winds increase. Could be 40, 45 miles an hour in gusts. That'd be mostly the higher elevations there. Uh, a little bit less wind, but still breezy for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And kind of breezy here through all the north central interior areas. Less wind south of the mountains, but more clouds and a bare chance of rain down along the north Gulf coast due to this trough lifting on up uh, with some moisture, rain, rain and snow depending on your elevation and the time of day here right on down into the panhandle and then that starts to taper off in toward Dixon entrance and becomes more showery down toward the Queen Charlotte's. <coughs> Excuse me. And for the low temperatures tonight for the panhandle anywhere from upper 20s to mid 30s, lower 30s from the North Gulf Coast, uh, South Central Alaska, maybe some upper 20s as well, 20s. Upper Teens, Copper River Basin, single numbers, Northway, Toke, Eagle, all the way up uh, to the Brooks Range, a little below zero, looks like uh, zero to five below here, Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, zero to five above on the west side, warming into the lower 20s, no attack valley in the northwest coast, and then lower 30s here for the, in, well into the interior, Cuscombe Valley, all the way back out to the coastline, lower 30s, upper 20s, St. Lawrence Island, and it looks like uh, mid 30s, mid to upper 30s for the Aleutians on those lows to the Alaska Peninsula. And then the highs for <clears throat> Tuesday afternoon, upper 40s to mid 50s to sit in a valley. Uh, see some reddish areas or orange showing up there in the Cuscombe Valley, which suggests maybe something a little warmer than 42, probably closer to 50 uh, as shown there. And Tanah Valley, not too bad, 45 to 52 for the highs. And staying in the lower teens, North Slope and Arctic Coast, 20s to lower 30s through the Brooks Range, warming up mid 30s there for the uh, Kotzebue Sound area. Southeast coast, upper 40s to mostly lower to mid 50s. And for the low temperatures the following morning, Wednesday morning, we've got uh, mid to upper 30s now for the uh, southeast coast. And uh, upper 20s to mid 30s again, south central Alaska. Single numbers here on the east side and a little below zero from the Brooks Range. Again, zero to five below to the eastern Arctic coast. Barrow minus one and lower 20s there as you head southwest into the Chukchi Sea area, Kotzebue and the northern Seward Peninsula with uh, lower 30s here, Yukon, Cuscombe Delta, eastward of the Cuscombe Valley, uh, low west of the Cuscombe Mountains, probably be a little below freezing there. And then Bristol Bay back above freezing mid 30s for the lows, a little warmer down the peninsula to upper 30s here for the Fox Islands, back to the mid 30s for the Western Aleutians. And then for high temperatures, <clears throat> we've got uh, single numbers on the east side, a little above 10 on the west side for the Arctic coast. And it looks like uh, mostly in the 45 to 50 degree range here over the southwest interior, about the same for the Susitna Valley, about the same for the Tanana Valley as well around the greater Fairbanks area, mid to 40s for the North Gulf Coast and uh, lower 50s for the Panhandle with uh, upper 40s the forecasting for Northeast Bristol Bay. Otherwise, uh, really not a big change temperature wise with uh, the Aleutian staying a little cooler. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving into the uh, flying weather graphics here, we've got uh, band IFR with the first front coming in uh, for tomorrow morning. Again, the Bering Strait, uh, Norton Sound, Southern Seward Peninsula, right across the southwest here to Kodiak Island, Kachemak Bay, and then on to the east-southeast. 
Uh, some marginal VFR trying to creep up northward to the Kenai Peninsula, mostly along the coast. VFR for the remainder of the interior. And also the Panhandle starting out with nothing but VFR skies all the way to Dixon Entrance. And then some of this marginal VFR finds its way onto the south coast for tomorrow afternoon, otherwise remaining VFR elsewhere. Same thing, VFR, Copper River Basin, Prince William Sound, Yakutat, all the way up across just about all of the interior. Uh, southwest, still seeing some lower conditions here, uh, especially along the eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range. Could be even some uh, IFR a little farther to the south there, all the way down to Kachemak Bay, Iliamna, maybe, or west Iliamna, and a swath southwest to Kodiak. IFR, uh, Bering Sea, south of uh, Nunavak Island, and uh, right on the edge there, the Perblofs up to St. Lawrence Island. Marginal VFR for the Aleutians, and that'll continue into uh, Wednesday morning with actually some areas of IFR starting to develop here from, uh, or for the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, Pacific side mainly, and then that same pattern up the uh, western Alaska range. Kodiak Island looks uh, IFR, especially on the east side, and now we've got IFR showing up along the coast of the uh, Kenai Peninsula, Western Prince William Sound, Portage, areas of IFR up to the north there, mainly on the north slope, uh, a lot more scattered and isolated here over the eastern interior. Now the southeast coast, all IFR, uh, except for a patch right about there, Elfin Cove and vicinity, marginal VFR along and off the coast in the Gulf of Alaska. And then for the afternoon, IFR, Kenai Peninsula here, along the coast range and the coast, up to the coast range, it looks like the northern and eastern panhandle, otherwise marginal VFR. Pretty good VFR north of the Alaska Range, west to St. Lawrence Island, Arctic Coast VFR, IFR, south of Nunavak Island still, and remaining off the coast and extending back to the west-northwest. Uh, and it looks like St. Lawrence Island VFR through the strait, marginal VFR, Alaska Peninsula, and the Aleutians. Passes, Anatovic and Attigan, both VFR for, the, for tomorrow. And... Uh, Looks like uh, Tuesday, Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR with uh, probably IFR again on the eastern entrance, possibly for Lake Clark, uh, farther north of Merrill, probably escaping it. And for Rainy, marginal VFR at times, uh, lowest conditions eastern entrance. Uh, and then Windy, staying in the VFR zone, as well as Isabel, Mentasta, and Tanita, all, in, all will be VFR. Portage, though, uh, marginal VFR, eastern entrance, uh, Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels, uh, with the upper level ridging through here, we've now got about 2,000 feet, anyway, off the surface. Uh, one pocket there, another one up off the western Arctic coast. At the surface, north of St. Matthew Island, and uh, kind of inland now over the southwest interior, hugging the coastline east side of the Panhandle. Icing, best chance here in the shaded area. Uh, coming up toward Kodiak Island, along the Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutians, mostly of the uh, just uh, light to isolated moderate rime type icing there, and above about 5,000 feet here and roughly 4,000 feet or so uh, farther to the north. And the jet stream looking like this tomorrow, upper level low there coming down into the Yukon, uh, affecting the panhandle there with some westerly winds at 70 knots at 33,000 feet, another system out there in the Bering Sea, and kind of a split flow here, good jet across the Pacific, splitting right in this area, and again, off to the south, the main branch, the other one kind of wraps back around, going around that upper high, right along the Arctic coast. And for 9,000 feet, we've got uh, low pressure, right in about this position there, not too far from the Pribilofs, south of the low center there, pretty strong westerly winds, uh, 55 to, or well, actually 25 to 55 knots, looks like the 60 knot winds will stay south, south of the area and then southeast winds 35 maybe to 45 knots 25 for Kodiak 20 to 25 here over the interior or less especially up to the north there but central Arctic coast on to the west side 30 to 35 knot winds really light here for the eastern north gulf coast down across the panhandle and at 3,000 feet light winds in those areas as well really light and variable over the southeast interior and easterly 25 to 30 north slope and the Arctic coast here in the west and then those strong westerly winds up to 55 knots there across the eastern Aleutians. Southeast 25 to 35 here for the uh, southwest interior and uh, even some higher winds over the central interior. Turbulence looking like this, uh, moderate chop in the, in the uh, red shaded areas here for the Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. <music> Hello, I'm a Gozar series weather satellite orbiting 22,000 miles above Earth. 
I can see a lot of cool stuff from up here, and I take pictures of it with my spiffy camera that has 16 different settings. I have such good eyesight, I can see clouds, snow, smoke, smog, and ash, so I can warn you about dangerous conditions and help you avoid them. When storms are brewing, I watch them closely and help with hurricane, tornado, and flood warnings to help keep you safe. And my lightning mapper tracks lightning strikes way up in the sky, even through dark, dense clouds. I also help with search and rescue missions. I listen for distress signals from emergency beacons and tell search and rescue teams just where to find people who need help. But even when I'm keeping a close eye on Earth, I'm monitoring weather out here in space, too! I watch the sun for big bursts of energy, which send waves of radiation toward Earth that can affect power grids, block communication with planes, cause errors in GPS, and damage satellites. Space weather is also very dangerous for astronauts working outside the International Space Station. I warn them so they can get inside where they'll be safe. So the next time you watch a weather report or check your phone for the forecast, remember, that's me. So look to the sky and wave. I'll be here. Things are looking pretty bad down there. But don't worry, I'm going to give weather forecasters a heads up and help you stay safe. I'm a Gozar series weather satellite, and one of my jobs is to keep an eye on Earth's weather as I orbit above. But I'm 22,000 miles above Earth. How does your local weather forecaster know what I see all the way up here? First, I have to figure out what's going on. I point my special camera at the Earth and take pictures of the clouds I see below. My pictures show where the clouds are, but I also take lots of other notes about the clouds. For example, how high they reach into the atmosphere, how much rain they might cause, and when a severe storm may be forming. But I can't keep all of this information to myself. I have to share it with weather forecasters down on Earth. A big antenna is waiting for my call. Since I'm a satellite, I send my pictures and notes in a computer language of ones and zeros. Luckily, the antenna speaks my language. Computers connected to the antenna organize my notes and combine all of the pictures and cloud information and translate them into weather maps. They send a version of the maps back up to me. I'll hold on to these for later. Another copy of the maps is split into smaller pieces. This helps the maps move faster from one place to another. The map pieces are then sent for processing before being sent back up in the sky to a communication satellite. From there, the maps are picked up by antennas at the National Weather Service forecast offices in each region. There are more than 100 offices. I also take the maps that I received and send them out to companies that specialize in making the maps more colorful and better for viewing on TVs and computers. The colorful maps and the maps from the forecast offices then go to your local weather forecaster. The forecaster combines the information from these maps with lots of other information, like model forecast data and radar data, to make predictions about the upcoming weather in your area. And that's how I help you find out if bad weather is going to ruin your afternoon plans. You're welcome.
Soon it will be my time to shine. In outer space. I'm the GOES-R satellite. That stands for Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite. And the R stands for my order in this series of weather satellites. Like my older siblings before me, I'll do a lot for watching weather, but I'm pretty special because I have a lot of new gadgets. I'm originally from Colorado, but my journey to space has a few stops along the way. I'll be shipped in a very special satellite shipping container to Kennedy Space Center. Moving me around is not easy. I'm over 18 feet wide and weigh 6,000 pounds. And then things get really exciting. I get loaded onto an Atlas V-541 launch vehicle. A big rocket! Woo! After Atlas and I blast off together, my compartment separates from the launch vehicle and I continue to climb higher and higher. Then I break away completely and unfurl my solar panel and antenna. <sighs> After that, I have to use my thrusters to get into just the right position, 22,000 miles above the ground and traveling 1.9 miles per second to keep up with Earth's rotation. And then I can officially start my job along with my fellow GOES sisters, where I take advanced pictures for more accurate weather forecasts, map lightning in real time, and improve the monitoring of the sun's activity. It's going to be so awesome! I can't wait! And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at the sea ice analysis for Monday, you can see continued melting here, especially along the southwest coast now. Also even thinning out there north and northeast of St. Lawrence Island into the Bering Strait, as well as along the northwest coast here. And again, still have the uh, fracturing ice uh, from Wales to Shishmaref that uh, may pull away from the shore fast ice uh, in the next couple of days. Coastal water forecast, south winds at 10 on the south coast, sea 7 feet. Light southeasterly winds on the north coast with 6-foot seas. Lynn Canal, smoke craft advisories there, north 25 knots tomorrow with 5-foot seas. Coming down to 15, Stevens Passage and south 15 for Clarence Strait. Outlook for Wednesday, south winds switching around to the south at about 15 for northern Lynn Canal. Stronger to the south here, <clears throat> 20 gusts 35 for Stevens Passage. Clarence Strait, southeast at 25, south 25 here on the south coast, and 20 knot winds from the south southeast on up to the north. And for Cook Inlet, northeasterly is at 20 knots with four foot seas, a little higher there south of the Forelands. Gales tomorrow, east 35, Kachemak Bay, about 30 knots there for the Barren Islands. Small craft advisories, western North Gulf Coast, and 15 to 20, or 15 knots, Prince William Sound. And then for the uh, Wednesday outlook, west or gale for, <laughs> sorry, uh, small craft advisory winds for Prince William Sound, east 25 knots, five foot seas, southeast 30 for the eastern North Gulf Coast, and then more easterly, a little lighter there, but still small craft advisories for the uh, western zone. And the Barren Islands, southeast 30, turn easterly and blow right into Kachemak Bay with 10 foot seas and small craft advisories south of the forelands for Cook Inlet, 20 knots on the north end. And Bristol Bay, southeast winds 35 knots, so we'll go gale warnings there. Right on down the Bering Sea side of the peninsula to Cape Sarachev, Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape, actually Cape Sarachev to Sitkanak, south 30 knots, seas 12 to 16 feet. 20 knot winds in store for Kodiak Island from the south southeast. And then taking a look at a Wednesday, we'll see uh, small craft advisories here for Kodiak Island, 25 knot winds south on the east side to east for uh, Shalikov Strait. Southeast or south, 20 knots from Sitkanak to Castle Cape, and then picking up small craft advisories here, 30 knots southerlies there on down to Cape Sarachev. A little lighter, but still in the small craft category, uh, all along the north side of the peninsula in across Bristol Bay, 25 knot winds with five foot seas. Out in the Aleutians, uh, pretty good, uh, still some storm warnings going out there tomorrow, south of the Adak Atka area, and just under storms for the north side, 45 to 50 knots with seas, as you can see, up to 30 feet. 
on the south on the Pacific side of the islands, 30 to 40 knot winds for the Fox Islands and becoming more west and then northwest and diminishing under gale force out towards Shimia in the afternoon. For Wednesday, west 30 out that way and northwest 35 here into Adak and then west northwest gales again a little lighter on Wednesday, but still gale force here, 35 to 40 knots, and that extends and slowly diminishes down to 25 to 30 knots there for an Alaska island of 12 to 20 foot seas. And for the southwest coast, easterly gales all along the coast tomorrow on Nunavak Island, on out across the northern Bering Sea, 20 knot easterly for the Pervilofs, east 25 for St. Lawrence Island. And then on Wednesday, Northeast 25 here for St. Lawrence Island, east 30 from Nunavak Island, uh, down to Nunavak Island, southeast, south of the island, northeast for the Perbolofs, and northeast 25 for St. Matthew Island with 12-foot seas. Up there along the Arctic coast, uh, looks like brisk wind advisories most areas here, except on the extreme east side there, down to 20 knots. And then from uh, Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, just east of 15, Cape Thompson to the, to the Wales area, east at 20. For Wednesday, we've got Wales to Cape Thompson, 15 knots, back into the brisk wind advisories here from Cape Thompson all the way up, turning easterly, and now extends to demarcation point, so uh, a little windier, but uh, uh, Wednesday over Tuesday. And for tonight, again, we've got the Bering Sea storm slowly pushing eastward here, the front uh, bringing uh, gale force winds, 50 miles an hour, rain here into the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, definitely up across the Perbolofs, approaching the southwest coast. This front in place will slowly weaken and some of that moisture trying to push up into southern Cook Inlet and then really beginning to dissipate and becoming more intermittent and less significant off to the northwest. Not much change over the eastern interior to the Arctic coast. Not much change for the panhandle as well. Now it'll hold through tomorrow except a chance of moisture down south there with that weak trough. And we've uh, less moisture now with this uh, washed out system here. Uh, it holds together a little better with some rain possible, Southern Cook Inlet, but not Kodiak Island. Next front pushing wind and rain into Bristol Bay and the southwest coast uh, swings eastward the next day. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>